All right, y'all. James Harden talking about this, that, and uh, the third game. Vincent thinking he could guard him there. Very emotional tonight, Tyrone. Take a look at this. This is a different Harden. The dagger right here. This is when the game was Ooh. over. On the depot. Just this. Is, look at the crowd. The crowd he was, was more crazy. Happy than him. Look at this emotion from Harden. Some looks like some expletives came out of his mouth. It's so good to see that kind of emotion out of our guy. Hello and welcome to Sixers Outsiders. I'm Crystal Rich. This is my partner in crime, Tyrone Johnson. The Sixers tie the series 2-2 after the 116 to 108 win over Miami in game four. Once again at home. Boy, oh boy, do we see a different player tonight in James Harden. This is the best that we have seen him play, especially in the postseason since he has become a sixer the first five games in the regular season we haven't seen that James Harden until tonight 31 points 13 in the second in that fourth quarter that dagger right there that was 16 points Tyrone in the fourth quarter he went absolutely off are you surprised that as the fans would say Houston Harden made an appearance tonight. Yeah, I'm shocked. I'm, I'm happy, but I'm shocked. Well, he had scored 10 points in the second half. Forget yeah. You just mentioned what he did in the fourth quarter. He scored 10 points in the second half of the first three games combined. And it was, they were down 1-2 in the series. To, to explode the way that he did tonight, no, I didn't see this coming. I'm very glad it happened. Yes. I'm very glad it happened. But I have to wonder if the emotion that he played with played a role in it. It seemed like maybe he was just a little bit more mentally into it, recognizing the moment. Maybe it was good that Embiid got off to a good start early, and he figured, all right, big man's got him early, and he got early foul trouble. I'm going to close this out. Or was the fact that he usually plays, he usually loses when Scott Foster is the referee, and he was the head ref. I don't know whatever it was, but it seemed different both emotionally and with how he played. He kept attacking the basket, and we've been complaining about him. Maybe he should stop short. Maybe he shouldn't keep going to the basket. A ton of foul shots for him tonight. Mm -hmm. The step back threes, I know people hate them. It's like, pass it, pass it, get rid of it, get rid of it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Boom, and then they're happy. It's amazing the roller coaster ride that he's on. This was a special performance. And now, and B got your game three coming back. Harden's got your game four. And now we got to figure out how to get to it the last three. Yeah, Joel and B looked a lot more comfortable today. As you mentioned, Joel Embiid went off in the fourth quarter. He got you 15 points. I was a little concerned, though, because I saw James Harden had a big fat Bagel had a donut in that first quarter. So I'm thinking, oh, man, are we going to be in for another game where we're like, where's James Harden? He needs to step up, help Joel Embiid out. Thankfully, Joel Embiid went off in the first quarter. But for James Harden to shoot 60% from downtown. He's starting to feel a lot more comfortable while doing a great job facilitating. Got you nine assists as well. And I think that when we see this James Harden that gets emotional, it's a good thing. He needs to keep showing up. And the crowd, whenever this series re reaches home, hopefully reaches home again, when the crowd gets into it, it seems like it really galvanizes him to play better. There is one point where he put his hand up after a big shot, and he wanted to hear more from the crowd. So if you are at home, or if you were at this game, make sure that you are loud because James hear it. James Harden hears it. He likes to hear it. And obviously, it makes him play better because he had those two quarters in the second and the fourth where he turned up and everyone is talking about it using the hashtag Sixers Outsiders. Let's go through some tweets. Jake Micken says, and that's why you make the trade for a superstar, someone who can help you in the playoffs, help Joel Embiid after he got banged in the eye, had a concussion, everything, the thumb, everything. Thankfully, he was looking more comfortable tonight, but James Harden put this team on his back back and it was so good to see it absolutely was and everybody's noticing somebody's using your line michelle uh, it <laughs> says oh my god Say let's it. go with the long let's go. go yes i'm sure that's what she was saying at home <laughs> talking about but it was specifically talking about harden's great play and you know we just have to be honest we, we, if you're in Philadelphia, we know about the Toronto second round. Mm -hmm. We know what happened in the bubble. We know what happened last year in the second round and, and Simmons not shooting in all those fourth quarters. To have a second guy, we've been talking about, there has to be times, especially when you saw what the Heat, the length that the Heat went to to try to deny the ball from Joel Embiid. They're mm -hmm. fronting them. They had a bunch of turnovers trying to get them the ball. Doc Rivers addressed that on Post Game Live, saying that that's something they're going to work on. Yeah. 
if the where is the other guy? It was always when will Simmons? When will Simmons step up if they're if they're doubling and tripling Joel Embiid? Who's going to step up? And finally, you saw what's going to happen if you keep on playing Joel Embiid that aggressively on the defensive end, and you leave him. You saw both those shots that we showed in open single coverage. He's not doubled there. It's either Gabe Vincent, who usually kills the Sixers guard him, or Oladipo one on one because they're they're bracketing Joel Embiid. He made him pay over and over again. And now going into Game Five, Miami has to decide: Do we want to stop Harden? Do we have to stop and beat? It Two, makes it so much harder, Tyrone. Yes, before it was always just stop and beat. That other guy's not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. Now it's we got to make a choice. And that choice so far, ha the last two games has not looked good. And I have to be honest, Crystal, through four games, mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen. I thought this series was over. I was wrong. <laughs> this Heat team. We all they're, thought it. They're not that good. This Heat team is not that good. This is winnable now, and I did not expect to be saying this with Joel B coming back, the way it looked, the way the supporting cast were missing shots, the way Harden was missing shots. I did not expect to be here, but now it's winnable, and now a reporter literally just texted me that it appears, we're not 100% sure, that Kyle Lowry may also be out for game five because of that hamstring. You saw him holding it. He was very ineffective once Only again. six points for Lowry yeah, in this yeah, game. Struggling, he might be out. It just looks like the Sixers have a big opportunity here created by James Harden that I just didn't see coming. Yeah, I mean, Miami 20% from deep tonight. Meanwhile, the Sixers 48%. Why do you think that was? Uh, uh, James Harden shooting 60%, 6 of 10 from deep. And then you have some guys who won't get much credit, but I want to give them a little bit right now. Danny Green, 3 of 4 from downtown. He is in the green room in his corner office just getting his money. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it from Danny Green tonight getting those 11 points, especially when we win by 8. That was just tremendous to see from him. You have guys in, in Miami like Tyler Hero, one of five from deep. You have Victor Oladipo, one of five from deep. You have P.J. Tucker, one of four from deep. They couldn't buy a bucket. They weren't shooting great. Sixers defense is obviously better with Joel Embiid. There's so many factors that go into this, Tyrone, but after those first two games where it was the Sixers struggling from deep, the Sixers couldn't buy a bucket, I still feel like there is a common denominator of Joel Embiid comes back on the court. He's not up there making Danny Green shots. It's still, it's still the ball coming out of James Harden's hand. It's still the ball coming out of Danny Green's hand, but there's still something about the presence of Joel Embiid that opens things up a little bit more. I think it adds a little bit more of a comfort to the players while they're on that court and allows them to make these shots that are coming and proving to be so valuable in this playoff series. Yes, to your point, thanks to Brian with the stat, the, the Sixers outscored them by 27 Ooh. from the three-point line.